Chapter 12 is one of my very favorite chapters. The reason why is because this actually gives you a glimpse of what it is that astronomers do. Over more, most of the course, we look at the things that astronomers have learned and figured out, but this one actually gives you a glimpse as to how it is that we do the things that we do. And so because of that, I really like it. Now, there are lots of equations and math in this chapter. I realize that. Don't stress out too much. Focus more on the connections and the relationships and less on the exact math. Okay? It's more important for you to get the conceptual idea of what the equations are trying to say than whether or not you can actually use the equation. All right, so as we look up in the night sky, we see lots and lots and lots of stars. Hey, um, on any given night, you can see about 3,000 stars, or at least about 3,000 are visible to the naked eye. Well, the only object that we know of in our own solar system to actually give off its own light is the sun, so it is reasonable to think that maybe these things that are giving off their own light are the same kind of object as our sun. Okay, so it's not that big of a leap. Well, if they are things like our sun, then they're probably really, really far away, which is why they're not as bright as our sun. So we then want to figure out, so how far away are they? Well, we've mentioned previously, it was in the very first lecture when we were start talking a little bit about different um, ways we measure distance, one of the ways we do this is by using the idea of parallax. Okay, so um, the idea of parallax, again, the best way to do it is by doing a quick demonstration. Hold up one finger close to your face, one farther away, make sure you can see both of them, and then blink back and forth. Look through your right eye and your left eye and see how things are changing. Notice that as you blink, your fingers appear to move compared to the background. Now, your fingers aren't actually moving, but they look like they're moving. This is the principle of parallax. Okay, well, we can actually write, uh, figure out a relationship between how much of a shift the observer gets and how far away the object's going to be. So, with your fingers, I hope you noticed that your whichever finger was closer appeared to move more and whichever finger was farther appeared to move less. Okay, so there's this clear relationship. The farther away an object is, the less it appears to shift as the observer changes point of view. Well, we can use the motion of the Earth to help us figure this out. So we take a picture at one time of year, we take a picture 12, uh, 12 months later, then we take half of the angle uh, that the star has moved, and that is our parallax angle. Okay, well, because we have this relationship, the farther away the object is, the smaller the parallax angle we get, we can form this equation. The distance to the object measured in parsecs is equal to 1 divided by the parallax angle measured in arc seconds. So remember, an arc second is 1 60th of an arc minute, and an arc minute is 1 60th of a degree. So in other words, an arc second is really, really small. It's about 1 36 hundredth of a degree. Okay, and that also means that one parsec is going to be a very large distance. So how do we actually use this? So let's take the example of the very closest star to us. So looking at its parallax angle, it has a parallax angle of 0.772 arc seconds. Okay, putting that into our equation, we get 1 divided by 0 0.772 gives us 1.3 parsecs. And now, most people don't think in parsecs, so we're going to convert. 1 parsec is about 3.26 light years. So, 3.26 times 1.3, this means that the very closest star to us is over 4 light years away. In other words, they are really, really, really far. We mentioned previously that the ancient Greeks believed that the Earth was the center of the universe and that everything orbited around it. One of their arguments for why is that if the Earth moved around the Sun, we should be able to see parallax. They actually understood this idea already. So the argument is that we don't see a parallax, and therefore the Earth must not be moving. However, when we're looking at tiny, tiny angles like 0.772 arc seconds and distances in of uh, four light years for the very closest star, there's no way that their eyes could have been able to actually see this. And therefore, they were wrong, not because they were stupid, they just had no concept of how big space actually is. 
we have determined the parallax of one billion stars. And this has been done in the last five years because of the Gaia mission. Okay, and this is a really big number, a billion. However, this is still only about 1% of all stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Now, one problem with parallax is, remember, the farther away the object is, the smaller the parallax angle is going to be. What this means is once something is far enough away, the parallax angle is going to be so small, we're not going to be able to see it anymore. And so there's going to be a practical limit to how far away we can determine distance using parallax. Now, people are coming up with clever uh, methods and techniques all the time. So because of that, we've gotten up to this 1 billion mark, which is amazing. But I don't know how much farther we're going to be able to push it. This means that eventually we're going to need to find other ways of determining distance, which we're going to get to later on in this chapter.